welcome. It's Krista from Creative Souls Art, and we're going to take 10 minutes to get our creative souls inspired and motivated to create. In this episode, we're going to explore mixing dark skin tones. Now, there are several ways to approach uh, painting skin tone with acrylic paint. In this episode, we're going to keep it pretty basic. We are choosing titanium white, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and ultramarine blue. Now you can choose the basic primary colors, which is red, yellow, and blue. And this is kind of close to the primary colors. Your yellow would be your yellow ochre. Your burnt sienna is kind of red on the reddish side. And then you have blue. And here I've developed just a simple color chart. And I start with three colors, my darkest dark, my mid-tone, and my lightest light. To achieve my dark, darkest dark, I will mix my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna together. That gives me a nice deep dark brown, almost like a raw umber or burnt umber, depending on how reddish or how bluish that brown turns out. And then I'm going to go in and mix my mid-tone. This I achieve by mixing burnt sienna and yellow ochre. Soften that or to neutralize that color, I'll give it a little bit of ultramarine blue just to knock it back a bit so it's not so orange or so red or so yellow. And then I have my lightest light, which is white. And then I'll take a little bit of that mid-tone and mix it into my white pile. Uh, and that'll get me my lightest light. Now that isn't my highlight though. That's just the lightest light in my color blocking phase. Now, as I move forward and I continue to add additional layers throughout my piece, using those three colors, I will lighten and darken and create a huge value scale using those three colors. So let's get started. Usually when I get started, I start with my darkest dark and I put my darks in the area uh, where I think they should go. I'll use a photo reference. Uh, a good idea sometimes is to print out your photo reference in black and white so that you can see the dark, the mid-tone and the lights. Black and white usually will break it down into its simplest values so you can actually see it. Now, this is my color blocking phase. This is where I will incorporate my three main colors, my darkest dark, my mid-tone, and my lightest light. Uh, and I'll go ahead and add my darkest dark in there, putting it in the areas that I think they should go. And then I will go ahead and incorporate my mid-tones basically cover the entire rest of the face with this mid-tone color. And then I'll go in and incorporate my lightest light. Now, in the end, it will look like a big mess. <laughs> and it's kind of an abstracty, very uh, loose interpretation of what I'm trying to achieve. But that's just the first layer. And that's me just getting in the color blocking, putting my light, dark, and mid-tone in the spaces where I think they should go. There is still room for adjustment and there is still room to kind of move around with these colors. So nothing at this point is set in stone. As I continue forward, I'll start blending and really honing down on the details. And I'll continue to add additional layers upon layers until it gets to where I want it to be. You can stop at any time. The more expressive you wanna be, the less layers you will do. The more realistic you wanna be, you'll continue to add additional layers until you really get into that really fine detail. 
the brushes, I usually use smaller brushes depending on how much space I need to cover. But for the eyes and just detail, I like using the synthetic, synthetic round or filbert brushes. Another tip, I will also add work with either a medium or some clear gesso. The clear gesso will help me loosen up the paint and spread it around. It also helps me, helps the paint stay wet just slightly longer. And an easy way to kind of approach the face, if you're feeling overwhelmed by the full face, after you've done your color blocking phase, Break the face down into sections and focus on those specific sections and then move on to the next section. So sometimes I'll break the, the face down into a few sections, the forehead, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the cheeks, and then the chin. So I'll focus on the forehead, get that to where I kind of want it to be, then I'll work on the eyes, then I'll work on the nose, the chin, and then the cheeks. Not in any particular order, whichever, I don't know, whatever feels easiest for me. Sometimes it's easier to break that down into those different sections so you don't feel too overwhelmed, or you can work the entire face. Totally up to you. As you move forward and as you practice and work on it more and more, you'll find a system or a process that works for you. Now I'm gonna continue on building up the layers, building up the skin tone, using my base colors as my guide, and then lightening and darkening those base colors, the dark, mid-tone, and light, uh, to get a nice smooth transition from light to dark. Um, I'll use my brush to, to scrub and blend. The white gesso helps get that nice smooth transition as well. I'll keep building it up until I get it where I need it to be. Uh, and then I'll focus on the background and the hair but in no particular order, whatever flow I'm feeling right now. But in this lesson, we're just kind of focusing on the face.
Right now I've got a nice basic uh, structure of the face. I'll continue to add some more detail, softening up transitions. I'll work on the hair and the rest of the painting. Um, but this is a great starting point. And I suggest you continue to practice, continue to build, create your color charts, mixing your three base colors and then lightening and darkening those colors uh, to create a nice value scale for your skin tone. Stay tuned for another episode of Getting Inspired in 10 Minutes. We'll explore new color palettes for skin tones or other tips and techniques uh, that you might have uh, along your creative journey.